Some viewers may find this disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hi, my love. I'm kidding. Hi, my loves. It's Destin Choice and you're watching Choice TV. So for today's video, I'm here to talk about Queen and Clearance Rack. Now, I haven't made a video about Queen and Clearance Rack in a very long time. I'm eating Ethiopian food. Because as you guys know, Queen and Clearance Rack are just boring as hell to me. I don't watch their videos at all. I don't keep up with them. And I stopped making videos about them a long time ago because it's just repetitive nonsense. We all know what it is and we all know how these couple channels who exploit and glamorize their relationships usually end up. Now, I first started making videos about Queen back when, you know, y'all remember? Y'all remember when her ex, Chris, you know, cheated on her and publicly embarrassed her? Yeah, that time. I made videos about Queen a long time ago back when, you know, her and her ex, Chris, were in a very public relationship or relationship goals and everything. And I remember I made a video back then where her and Chris. Y'all remember that when, you know, Queen was out here scamming people and Queen was out here pretending that she was going to be selling iPhones with Chris and then they ended up not selling the iPhones and they just scammed all their fans. Uh, six is in the iPhone service and then the gold for 500 each. <laughs> I don't think it's fair that they can just keep living their life scamming people, stealing people's money like it's not right and... We just want them to know that they're not going to get away with this and that they just need to send us our money back. Had them thinking that they was really selling iPhones and they ended up making thousands of dollars off of that. She was a scammer and people just forgot about that. I also made videos back when, you know, her ex Chris used to cheat on her all the time and he was out here sucking on transgender and fucking on transgenders and shit. And also remember when Queen faked the whole miscarriage and people just forgot about that? Y'all remember that? Hey, I'm a man. I'm a woman. You can't say you're pregnant though. <laughs> I don't do that. Duh, duh. Duh. I am. I still gotta go back in the weed, so you don't know. Look at look at that. Look at that. Y'all saw that? Look at her. Why her eyes shifty? What you looking for, bitch? Them iPhone do ain't never sell. It'd be a difference if the baby like was like if I was like six months pregnant or five months, and I see my belly bump and stuff, and you know something happened where the baby couldn't make it. But in this case, the baby really didn't even get to develop yet. Bro, look at Chris' face. Anytime soon. Look at Chris' face. Hopefully, I just don't be out in the middle look, look, look. of, I don't know, nowhere filming or something, and then all of a sudden, like, <laughs> blood just come gushing out because that's what happens when you have a miscarriage. Sorry for people who He know this you bitch know, lying. Stuff like that, but that's what happens. He knows she I'm, lying. It right. wasn't like it was anything planned. That we would see it would be different if we were trying to plan for it, child. Right. You know, it just happened out of nowhere. I'm not really, you know, really that sad about it. Yeah, you know? Chris's pullout game was just a little too weak, I guess. And if you guys look closely, Queen literally has the fucking oxygen tubes in her damn nose. Why? Because the hospital allegedly let her leave with the oxygen take in her car. Now explain to me how the fuck that makes sense. Queen was like, uh, yeah, y'all. And then she ended up taking the hospital gown home and she ended up like pretending that she had a miscarriage and had a whole oxygen tank. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Me, yeah, me either. Now, Clarence Rack, if you guys didn't know, pretty much came in as a rebound and he sweeped Queen off of her feet. He put was a great, he was a great support system for her. His, his older sister managed Queen, and overall, they were just really good to Queen. Queen was constantly leaving Texas because she was tired of Chris, and she was flying out for work, and then also going by to go see Clarence, and she was staying with Clarence and everything. And it was just a really big deal for her because she felt like she finally found her person. Eventually, she dropped her song, Medicine. The song did tremendously well. Queen saw amazing mainstream success, and Queen just overall became a massive coming of age story. Queen was one of the few influencers during the late 2010s era who really saw mainstream success off of YouTube. She was just a complete inspiration. And I'm really happy for her because again, not many people get to make it big off of being an influencer the way she did. You know, in person, I don't know about y'all, but she could have probably surpassed or been on the same level as an Amy Winehouse or even a Whitney Houston. Probably could have surpassed them. But of course, Queen's lazy and she definitely didn't get that far. Even though things have slowed down, Queen is still pretty popular and she's still doing pretty well for herself with a nice, cute, cult following. However, Queen and Clarence have always been questioned and side-eyed because as we all know, a lot of people questioned if Clarence was really into her like that because it was pretty obvious that Queen pretty much put Clarence on. Now, before Clarence was a celebrity as we would like to look at him as, Clarence was sleeping in his parents' basement he had a small little clothing line selling t-shirts and he had an Instagram following for taking shirtless photos and showing his print. You know, the typical Instagram model, he was just overall a pretty boy on the internet. Queen saw him, found him attractive, and she taught him everything as far as YouTube, social media marketing, making money on the internet, and so much more. 
However, it was very abundantly clear that Queen was the breadwinner because she really did put him on. You know, she moved him out of his parents' basement, put them both in a nice house. And even though that's an amazing thing, and I feel like if you are in a relationship with somebody, you should be elevating with them and they should be elevating you. That was beautiful because, again, they're in a relationship. However, so many years have gone by. They now have a child. And she did have that child within a few months of being official with him. And a lot of people are kind of side-eyeing Clarence because he has yet to propose to Queen. And the reason why this conversation has come up again is because Queen and Clarence were doing an advice segment on their YouTube channel, their joint YouTube channel, where they were discussing couples, relationships, and advice, and much more. Basically, they got to a question that a fan asked them, and basically it involved, how would they feel if you were with somebody for a long time and they never proposed? After 10 years? 10 years? 10 years is fake. <laughs> <laughs> One of those that ain't talking about me. Though. Ten years. After ten years, and if you've been doing everything you could do, honestly, I just feel like a man knows. I just feel like he knows. He knows if you like. What would you do in that I would leave. After ten years. Yes, I definitely. Ten years is crazy. Forty-eight. You don't know how old that lady mm -hmm. is. Babe, your life is not over at forty-eight or fifty. I've seen fifty-year-old women. J Lo is past fifty. Like it's beautiful women out there. You can still get yourself. It's never too late. I don't think it's too late. Nah, it's never too late. I'm not saying it's too late. I'm just saying I think that would make it a little more difficult. Yeah, you just don't know what being with that she's in because you gotta understand. In order to put yourself in her shoes, like you're saying it easy, like oh I would leave, but she hasn't left obviously because she's been there for ten years. So she's not leaving for. A but if that's reason. something that you genuinely like, really want, and the and if you find out that your partner like has no one first of all like he said see if he has intentions of doing it have y'all ever talked about it like has he might it, not i'm not gonna lie he might not 10 years he might not yeah. he might but not if that's something that you want but maybe he doesn't want then maybe you need to break up with your boy and as you guys can see it seems like queen took this question very personal because she was essentially you know making it very clear if you don't propose to me i'm leaving and just from the way clarence asked her what would you do that's usually a red flag. That's usually a sign that Claren just wanted to see what she would say, just so how you can know how to move accordingly. And honestly, that's usually a big, big sign of a manipulator. Anytime you ever deal with somebody or date somebody or talk to somebody and they ask you, what would you do? Like, what would you do? Like, how would you react? Like, you ever done that before? Like, what would you do if I did this? That's usually a way of them seeing what they can get away with in the future. So always just remember to just never reveal your hands or tell somebody what you would do or tell somebody what you've gone through in the past because they'll just eventually throw it in your face or find a way to maneuver around what you've been through in the past. So that just told me everything I need to know. And again, most of us could be looking too deep into it and most of us are probably like fucking bored and boring and probably just need to focus on ourselves. But the reason why people are concerned about this is because a lot of us can sometimes reflect on this. Let's be honest, how many of us have been in situations where people have wasted your time? No one should be out here wasting their time because imagine wasting resources, time, trauma, energy, introducing someone to your family and they never really pop the question with you. And he made it very clear, I'll do what I want when I want and it's none of y'all business. One thing about me, I'm just always gonna step up on my shorty, mo. That's the mother of my kid, bro. About to be my wife, gang. Y'all should already know that, bro. Just because I haven't popped the question yet doesn't mean I'm not gonna marry her. All of that is none of y'all business though. And I understood and respected that, but to be honest with you, his reaction was just very telling during that Q&A because again, why haven't you married her yet? He basically made it very clear that he's taking his time, but what else do you need? And the reason why I don't think Clarence is going to marry Queen is because, let's face it, he's never going to marry that girl. He's never going to marry her ass, ever. And the reason I know he's never going to marry her, he might do like a little proposal video, like a cute little proposal video to get millions of views and get posted on blogs. But they never gonna get married. I mean, think about it for a second. Why would they get married when Queen gave him everything he needed? Queen gave him a platform. She put him onto money. She gave him great opportunities. She got he got sponsorships because of Queen. He gets great interviews. He got tons of views on his little struggle rap career that he eventually put a put a pause on. He did so well for himself. Why would he want to marry? What what benefit does he get out of that? So he's never really going to pop the question for her. And plus, there's already been allegations and rumors of him cheating on her. I mean, if y'all didn't know, Chris has a personal channel. Yes, Chris Queen's ex has a personal YouTube channel. And basically, a woman went live basically a year ago. And she discussed how Clarence is out here cheating on Queen. Now, for some reason, Queen Naja's ex, Chris, reacted to a video of somebody accusing Clarence of cheating. And she was like, this one right here is saying, that's why she said, that's, Clarence isn't the only one that she, that 
uh, that she smashed. She smashed another dude. That's the dude that they went and that that she was smashing before she smashed Clarence. Soon as he, soon as he leave, the men of the house, he go. The least you can do is be faithful. That's the that's the least you can do. She take care of all the bills, be paying you, buying you jewelry, buying your cars. The least you can do is keep your your little peeps in your pants. Pissing me off. Get your money back from him. How you gonna take the men of the house money for your own pleasure when she out there working hard, going on tours, this and that, and you just stay at home and you gonna this is this is new to me, y'all too. I'm I'm in shambles right now. Even though Chris Queen's ex is a troll and he's obviously probably bitter, he definitely dropped some hints that a lot of people didn't pick up on. On top of that, while he was dropping hints, Queen was still actively texting him. So it's just like little stuff like that tells you everything you need to know. He's constantly saying things like she's the breadwinner, she paid for everything. It seems like Chris knows something that we don't know, and I feel like it eventually is gonna come out one day. If they got married, they would just be wasting paper. Most of us already think of that. When you go on a date with somebody and you take somebody out or someone takes you out, you already know, oh yeah, my mom would like him. Oh yeah, my dad would not like him. Oh yeah, my, my friends would not like him. Or my friends would definitely like him. Or, oh yeah, you already know. So you already know who to take seriously and who not to take seriously. So it kind of applies the same way for a lot of men who decide to pursue women. You, they already know if they're going to marry you or not within a couple of months of even being with you. You build a man up to eventually leave you. And I came across this TikTok that perfectly describes why everybody's warning Queen. And the reason why people are warning Queen is because of a situation like this. You give too much, it'll eventually be your own demise. I'm so done with relationships, y'all. Like, I'm in my 20s. I see what the girlies mean by in your 20s live because I'm in my 20s. And I've been trying to be perfect wife, perfect girlfriend, perfect mom, and... I just been, you know, holding a nigga down for two years. And I don't got shit to show for it but a baby. Granted, I love my baby. But, bitch, a baby and bills. Extra bills. Because I was being dumb buying a nigga a car. And now I'm stuck with the car. So now it's like, I don't want no nigga. And if I get a man, I don't want no man who don't already got his stuff together. And I mean shit all the way together. Like, I mean, your shit better be. Your shit better not stick. Because I just can't do it no more. I done, I done play build the nigga. I done build the bear, build the man workshop too much. Too much to my liking. And you keep trying to build a man. And they, like it just don't work. Because they never going to get it. Matter of fact, if they don't do it when y'all first start. Or if you see they start slacking when y'all first start. Girl, go, go ahead and give it up. Because they ain't going to never do it. They're going to think you asking for too much. And that's real. That's coming from experience. Clarence didn't have much. He had a family structure. You know, he had his basement, he had his t-shirts, and he had his Instagram. But he didn't have much compared to what Queen bought to the table to him. People also got to take into account, it's not just the fact that Queen doesn't love herself, why Clarence isn't going to marry her. It's also this. Queen's family does not like Clarence. You got the nerve. You really do. She just bought you a Corvette, right? Why you make her cry on Christmas? You ain't think we knew about that, did you? Yeah, as good as she been to you, Clarence, you made her cry on Christmas? It's supposed to be a holly jolly time, right? <laughs> so if y'all didn't know, Queen has a little sister that's like 19, 20 years old. And Queen's little big sister went on Instagram five years ago addressing the fact that Clarence is controlling and Clarence is always putting shit in her head and so much more. This supposed to be a holly jolly time, right? You made her cry on Christmas? As good as she been to you? You should be kissing her feet. I see I see the stuff that you do. While she on live, you seeing her breath stink. You you belittle her and don't nobody see it but us. But we so toxic. I'm the bad guy. When I see the stuff that you're doing and it's being swept up under the rug. And y'all think I'm gonna be quiet because of some fans. No fans can shut me up. I'm sorry you gotta go through what you gotta go through. I apologize for what I put you through. 
But this nigga not right, bro. For real. He not, sis. Like, you, bro. Like, you know, bro. Only thing I could do is pray, but niggas not about to get on here and make me look like the enemy. And not to say her family's innocent, because Clarence even exposed the fact that Queen's little big sister stole his credit card one time to buy a good amount of things. Balenciagas, I ain't swiped for no Nikes or no Delta. But I ain't swiped for it because I'm broke. I ain't swiped for it because I needed it or wanted it. I swiped for it to show you that you're not about to disrespect my mama at the hospital and get all in her face like you about to fight her, bro. Period. You still got an ass whooping coming. Don't come to Detroit. I said what I said, period as fuck. I ain't never got to steal, nigga. I ain't never had to steal. Simple. But I, I did that to show you something. And on top of that, Queen's little big sister made it very clear that a big reason why they don't get along with Clarence very much, it has a lot to do with the fact that Clarence made Queen put up a boundary. Clarence doesn't really care for Queen's family that much. He got to know them and doesn't care for them. And that made Queen's family not care for him very much because they feel as though that he controls Queen's money and tells her what she should and shouldn't do with her finances. Ironically enough, Queen is also buying this man Corvettes, nice shoes, designer clothes, nice vacations. She pays probably for most of everything because, again, she's the breadwinner. And it's odd because her family doesn't like that. Her family doesn't like the fact. So it really seems like everybody just pulling Queen in one direction. And everybody just mad because they want to benefit off of Queen even more. And it seems like Queen doesn't know how to adjust her boundaries. On top of that, Queen is also managed by Clarence's sister, so keep that in mind. Queen is managed by Clarence's sister, and Queen has also employed some of Clarence's family members. So the fact that she put him on and his whole family on, it really just goes to show you that maybe there's some jealousy between Queen's family and Clarence's family. So more tension is just being built up. Other things that were happening were like things that people didn't know about. Sometimes she would get angry and even text Lee and, you know, tell her she felt like they were trying to take me away or like divide her family and both times that it was done lee and my mom had spoke after and lee explained to my mom that it wasn't you know like that and that she was only just trying to be there for me she was basically explaining to my mom the role that she played like manager and accountant like she would never try to um tell me what to do with my money as far as like when it came to my family like first of all that's another thing that i hate seeing that I let Clarence and Lee tell me what not and what to spend on my family like that's definitely not true if any decision I make is because I made the decision y'all now a lot of people say that I'm like being controlled and then I'm not gonna lie to y'all I really sat back and I I examined myself and I said dang well am I being controlled do I let people's opinions make me do something I don't want to do I really sat there and thought about it and then I came to the conclusion that I'm not being controlled. Now, I am submissive in my relationship. I'm submissive in my relationship, like, towards him. I'm all prissy acting and things like that. Like, a lot of stuff that y'all see me do is, like, when I act shy or, like, you know, kind of... That's just... I'm just, like, submissive. Like, it don't mean that I'm sad or I'm being controlled or manipulated or anything like that. One thing... They don't like him. They did at some point because he was a cute guy. He was young. He was hip. He was brand new to her life. And he was way better than Chris or so they thought. However, they did not like Clarence anymore because they felt like Clarence was controlling Queen. Basically, Queen's family basically used Queen as a cash cow. Queen was always their support system. And Clarence put Queen in a predicament where he made it very clear to her that she needs to start saying no and setting up boundaries with her family. Now, eventually got to a point where her man started getting in her head, and we know how that shit go. We've all been through that. We've all had friends. We've all had relatives, family members, the people we know personally. When they get a man, they start switching up and acting different because they got somebody in their head influencing their actions, influencing them to stay home, influencing them to say no, influencing them to do certain things that they wouldn't usually do because that's their partner who they're always laid up with all the time. You know, you're eventually going to listen to them because you don't want to piss them off and start an argument. So Queen's family does not like Clarence. They've made it very clear in numerous YouTube videos and her siblings have also made it clear. On top of that, Chris had the same issue. You know, and, and, and as men and as females and it's, it's, it's natural to to start adapting to different things and start to change when you grow i've been with that girl for five years so i started to grow 
Then I was getting into it with her parents all the time, and it was just, and, and then I was, bro, I, I would literally cry, bro. Like, I was so hurt, bro. Chris said it very clear that at the end of the day, if the family don't like you, it's never going to work. If your man's family don't like you, it's not going to work. If your girl's family don't like you, it's never going to work. It's always going to be some conflict. It's always going to be some issue. And it may work for a little bit, but eventually it'll fizzle out. And it's either going to be one thing. You're going to end up having to distance yourself and cut your family off. Or you're going to end up having to get rid of that partner that you're with. But that was all for this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And yeah, that's that. Place out this bitch. You will always be, always be. I say fire to the rain. Watch it burn. I run the way. And I say fire to the rain. Watch it burn. That's all y'all get for free, and I don't even know the lyrics. Y'all have a good one.